Hey, today we are here with our experts about the F-35 because some news about the program have emerged that are definitely worth commenting together. Yeah, they're not very good, but that's everything we can afford. The news about the F-35 program are coming from the office of the Pentagon's Director for Operational Test and Evaluation. They have to publish every year a report about the state of the F-35 program, among other reports, and apparently this time they sort of tried to not to give too much publicity, but it actually surfaced anyway, so we are here commenting it. Uh, so there are different ways of measuring readiness and the different US services actually use different metrics calculated in slightly different ways even though the name can be the same. In the report he stated that there are some inaccuracies particularly in the way the Marine records uh, these metrics. However, the two main metrics are the mission capable readiness and the full mission capable readiness. An aircraft is mission capable if it can basically take off and land safely, which means in general that they can at least do a training mission. Full mission capable means that the aircraft can do full spectrum of the mission that is designed for. In the case of the F-35, which is a multi-role aircraft, this could be air superiority, reconnaissance, rather the ground attack or anything else. The standard that the US Armed Forces have depends on the aircraft and it is between 75% and 80%. We have to say pretty much none of the United States lineup actually matches this specification for several reasons. One including is that the country is at peace. One notable exception is the venerable A-10, but for example the F-22, which is the worst, is around 50%. The Navy tend to be a bit worse than the Air Force, but they also operate in a really unforgiving environment and the US Marines uh, tend to be the worst. New aircraft, if they have been fully accepted in service, tend to be the best and obviously old aircraft tend to be the worst, apart from the A-10 which is actually mortal. It will probably be like the B-52. Anyway, these are average values. Uh, a unit that is actually operationally deployed tend to be 100% because they are prioritized with all the support, all the spares or everything that is necessary to become 100% ready. Units that have just returned from a deployment tend to be the worst because when they come back to their home base is the time to repair uh, and refit and tidy up uh, everything that has happened during the deployment. So a low general readiness in peacetime is obviously relevant, but is no big deal. However, the F-35 is quite low. So it's true, the F-35 has not been accepted fully in service, but it still has been in service for uh, quite a few years and still doesn't even get close to the acceptable standard. To be honest, the standard for the F-35 has been relaxed and the objective has been set to 65%, but in 2021 the overall number was 61%. 61% is actually an average. The aircraft reached 71%, so above the target at the beginning of the year. And then in the second part of 2021, the readiness plummeted. And as it has to be expected, there are several inequalities between different units. For example, the F-35s deployed in Ailson in Alaska are on average 83% ready because that is a unit that does patrolling on the Arctic. In 2021 we had no breakdown between the different variants, but in 2020 we know that the A, the F-35A, was much better than the F-35B or the F-35C. Now, in 2020 this same overall readiness number was 39%. So one would expect that with the continuous improvement that is happening, aircraft is much more reliable now. Well, actually, no.
that was our expert. Well, actually no, because this better number is all due to the fact that at the beginning of the year, the readiness improved a lot, and improved a lot because there has been an extraordinary effort in procuring and deploying spares for the aircraft. In fact, the lack of spares or the exceedingly long time to receive spares is the main reason that is grounding an F-35. So at the beginning of the fiscal year 2021 there was this spike of spares availability that was due to a surge to improve the readiness but it basically faded away in few months. So it seems that the aircraft is not more reliable today than it was one year ago. Actually the entire world F-35 fleet has a system of procuring spares which hasn't proven to be really effective but this is a subject that may be worth a video on its own. The second reason why the aircraft is not reaching the readiness target is the lack of capacity at, for maintenance at depot level. So the actual units cannot do maintenance at their bases but they have to send the aircraft back to the manufacturer way too often. Also the crews are complaining that uh, repairs take twice as long as it was designed. In fact, uh, apparently a lot of attention has gone during the F-35 program in improving the ease of maintenance of the aircraft and in fact the aircraft has some very clever solutions in this area but they didn't prove to be effective. In particular engines, canopies and the stealth coating proved to be much more time consuming to repair and we all have seen the strange color on the F-35s on board of the Carl Vinson during their first complete uh, overseas deployment. We don't know exactly what it is, but it doesn't seem good. The fact that the aircraft has a relatively low availability is actually turning out to be a problem for pilots training. The F-35 is an aircraft that requires uh, a lot of training to be used properly by the pilot. It's extremely easy, but the systems and the tactics are different than the fourth generation aircraft. They need to be learned and to be assimilated. If the pilots can't fly long enough, well, their skill the grades with time. If all this seems bad, well, it gets worse. So the metric that we are talking here is the mean time between critical failures. It is basically how long the aircraft can fly before there is a critical failure that actually requires the aircraft to be grounded and fixed. The objective for the F-35A was 20 hours which is a respectable time. In 2021, the performance was 11.2. Problem is, in 2020, was 16.8. The BNC have different objectives, lower than 20 hours, and we have to say that both are actually on the money. Problem is, they got worse in 2021 from 2020. Not by much, but still, you shouldn't see that. On the report there are several tables that measure different metrics. As you see the situation is not terrible again, uh, but it's really not improving and this is probably the main concern. So the overall picture that we are having is that of an aircraft which is hard and expensive to keep operational. So the aircraft itself has shown to be very capable, but if the, there are very few flying, then even those exceptional capabilities are probably going to be not really effective. But unfortunately, we are not done yet. At the end of 2021, there are 845 unresolved issues about the aircraft, six of which are category one, Category 1 issue is an issue there where the life of the pilot is at risk or there is the risk 
of losing the aircraft and this is a 1A or issues that can compromise the mission and these are 1B category issues. Unfortunately we don't have the breakdown and these issues are obviously kept secret because each one of them is potentially an exploit that an opponent can use to counter the aircraft. Mind, no aircraft ever goes down to zero. There are always issues, but these are quite a lot. The F-35 is still relatively new, but these numbers are still quite high. More concerning is the fact that in 2021 about 150 issues have been resolved, but the number didn't go down significantly because new ones were discovered. This is not what you want to see. What you would like to see is the number of issues going down steadily till to the point that there will always be a few that are probably not that important to be fixed. Another concerning practice was the fact that we know that some category 1 defects have been downgraded to category 2. And apparently this has been obtained by a mitigation that was basically writing on the aircraft manuals that there was a problem and telling the pilots what not to do, which could be perfectly acceptable. There are several aircraft fly with similar recommendations, but still leaves us in doubt of what exactly the problem was. But there's another concerning element, probably the most concerning one, because in the context of the Block 4 development, the software development started working with a more agile approach. That is, a software release was planned every six months. It turned out to be impossible and it has been already moved back up to once a year. And one of the problems was software regression. That is, the new updates, the new upgrades broke something that was already working. A rather concerning one was about the AMRAM. In fact, the 120D was already integrated with the aircraft and working. Then a new software release was applied and they had problems. We don't know the extent if it really bricked the weapon and made it unusable, but still is definitely something that you don't want. Outside of the program, we don't really know how the software development in, on the F-35 has been managed, but with all these problems around software, Yes, definitely it seems that there is something fundamentally wrong in the way that piece of software has been designed. And now fixing it while it is operational, yes, it will require jumping through a lot of hoops. The report goes through a number of other issues, uh, but I'm sparing you the whole story of the Alice slash Odin uh, improvement or the whole story around the test environment that should finally validate the F-35 and provide the data for the final official acceptance of the aircraft in service. Yes, because at this time I can hear some of your objections. You may say, okay, the program has problems, but the aircraft is fantastic. It has demonstrated its superiority already in several occasions, so it really doesn't matter much, does it? You're only complaining because you are an F-35 hater. Well, my criticism about the F-35 is well known. The aircraft is a great aircraft, there's no denying it. It has been demonstrated in several uh, situations. It has been released in service too early, but now it has reached a point where it is using most of its capabilities. My criticism has always been that A, we are putting all our eggs in one basket. B, it is a system that is very dependent from the infrastructure in the United States. So I have potential problems with sovereignty. A friend uh, recently told me that my concerns may be unjustified. I sort of still beg to defer. So I'm not an F-35 hater. This is an extremely important program and I'm watching it closely like many other people are doing. However, the position that the aircraft has demonstrated its superiority in several occasions, so even if there are problems, it's no big deal, has some merit. Well, from my point of view, if the missing capabilities were not needed, then probably should not have been in the specifications since the beginning and no investment should have been done those could have been I don't know spared for a phase two but not being part
part of the initial package. And if those capabilities are actually needed, well, we should be concerned that they haven't been delivered yet, with hundreds of aircraft being produced and being operational around the world. Some others may say that since it has demonstrated such a superiority, it is well worth the investment and even though it is uh, difficult and expensive to keep operational, it's well worth it. Again, this objection has some merits, but at least in peacetime the resources are not unlimited. And this maybe is just the explanation of uh, those signs of mistrust in the F-35 program that we have seen in the last year, where before the program has always been a sacred cow for United States Armed Forces, till when General Brown declared that maybe it is too much and it is worth investing into a simpler airframe uh, with some F-35 features but easier to maintain, easier to deploy, and more recently cuts in the procurements have been announced where before the services were scrambling to acquire it. So it seems a never-ending story and I believe the F-35 is going to keep us entertained for many years in the future. If you like this video on the channel we have several other videos about the F-35 and other stuff that are going to appear beside me. If you didn't like this video thank you so much for watching this far. A big thank you to all all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or by being a member and see you there.